Good morning, everybody. Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. It's Wednesday. It's time for our daily devotion. So I am launching our Facebook Live event on the St. John's Facebook page uh, to welcome folks to come to our time of devotion together. I want to invite you to come and join me. As you join, if you want to leave a quick comment over in the comment moderation section, just let me know that you're present. That would be great. would love to say good morning to you. We've had the same kind of format for our devotions for um, almost two years now. We're going on 20 months, I think, of doing this. Um, we started this when the lockdown um, came and the pandemic started back in March of of 2019 and so we've been doing this ever since and 2020 2020 yeah time flies when you're having so much fun but a uh, pretty simple pattern we have an opening prayer we read the scripture for today the upper room devotion take an opportunity to reflect on it and then have a closing prayer as well good morning Susan hi Linda good morning to you welcome glad you're here Hi, Jack. Good morning to you. Morning, Mr. Tennell. Hi, Stacy. Good morning to you. Our devotion today is going to be centered out of Psalm 103, the 103rd Psalm. So if you want to find that, we're going to read the first five verses. Hi, Pat. Good morning to you. Psalm 103, verses 1 to 5. watching to see if anybody else leaves a comment. We'll begin here pretty quickly. Psalm 103, verses 1 to 5. If you're joining us a little bit later, um, please leave a comment as well. would love to know that you were here. We're going to begin with our prayer of illumination. O oh God, by your spoken word, you created everything that is. By your incarnate word, you redeemed us. By your comforting word, you are with us still. Prepare us now to hear your word to us this day. Amen. Hi, Barbara and Chris. Glad you've joined as well. Good morning, Shirley. Psalm 103, verses 1 to 5. That's where we're reading from. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all God's benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Our devotion writer is Dolores Knight. Maybe it's Kite, K-I-G-H-T, from Florida. And the uh, focus verse is 2 Corinthians 10, 5. We take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Let me read that again. We take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Here is Dolores' devotion for today. One day, I would, as I washed dishes, I agonized over things I had said in an earlier conversation. I combed over my words. Why did I say that? I should have thought more carefully before I spoke. I pictured myself reliving the conversation and saying different words. Then God spoke to my heart. I stopped, berated myself, and started to focus on worshiping God. Praise you, God, for you are my creator. Praise you, for you are my savior. Praise you, for you are my sustainer. When I finished my prayer of praise, I paused to contemplate what had happened. Earlier, when I was focused on my shortcomings, I felt overwhelmed and exhausted. 
But when I switched my thoughts to praising God, I felt exhilarated and energetic. This practice of redirecting my thoughts from beating myself down to praising God taught me that our Creator gives us the ability to change our thinking. We can change the pattern of our thoughts from focusing on ourselves to focusing on the Almighty. With this mindset, we can live faithfully. Thought for the day is praising God can renew my spirit and give me strength. We take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. It's an interesting way of paraphrasing it um, out of the NIV. I'm sure that the King James Version probably has something a little bit different in it. I think I'm going to try to search for that real quick. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 in the King James Version. Let's see. In 1611, it read this way. Kaz, is it really? 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Bring into captivity every ill thought to make it obedient to Christ. Pretty much the same. You know, it, it, it makes me um, think a little bit about um, maybe the struggle of the ideas of what it means to be um, a Christian, right? Or what it means to be righteous. I think in some ways we have given in to a notion of, of this kind of happy, joyful perfection that really doesn't exist in this world or, or for any of us in this life. I, I think there are people... I think there are people who are positive by nature, but in some ways they almost seem inauthentic in their lives because they're too over-optimistic and they bypass um, some things or they gloss over some things in their lives. It's almost as if their optimism is hiding some of their shadow self, and that is the negative, the pessimist, uh, the dark things that happen within each one of us. We know the flip of that is, is that there are folks who give themselves over way too much to the dark side of their personalities. They agonize way too much. They find themselves depressed, stressed, anxious, all those kinds of things. And, and you live life almost as if it's fearful and, and uh, of something else that's going to go wrong. And, and you can't, can't quite deal with that and, and overcome it to see hope enjoy in your life and so you know we've got those two kinds of extremes that we could be I think most of us are trying to figure out how to live in a healthy balance between those two things we understand that there are things that we will agonize over there are things that will make us anxious that will stress us out there are things that we maybe even cause us to feel depressed for the moment and that's okay they're, they're one side of um, the emotional system that God has given us as, as humans, as the highest form of God's creation. But to also know that we don't have to dwell there, we can also experience goodness in our lives, that we can find moments to praise God for joy that comes in, in different forms and celebrations of our lives, that we are a people who have hope, we have hope in the goodness of God, who is our creator, who is our savior, who is our sustainer, and that we don't have to necessarily have to always figure everything out on our own, but rather God promises to be steadfast and faithful. And because of that, we can live in the paradox of these two things. We can live in the elements of these two things. And because of it also, I think, maybe live a little bit more of a healthy life, a little bit more maybe emotionally healthy, knowing that um, it doesn't have to be all of, of one or all of the other. Rather, it is life is a mix of these things. It's how do we not let one suppress the other at the cost of our own mental health and even our spiritual health as well. And it's being able to recognize, I think, our shortcomings, being able to recognize when we feel overwhelmed or exhausted, finding those times of rest, finding those moments where we can pray, meditate, 
um, allow our bodies and our minds and our souls those opportunities to rest and renew. Read things that are going to encourage us, remind us of God's presence. Maybe the psalm is a good place for you to start. Reading the psalms and reminding that God is ever-present with us. An ever-present help in the times of our struggle, as the scriptures say. And from that, be able to praise God, knowing that God can renew both our spirit and give us strength. Because that is what God wants us to experience in life are the moments that can overcome. If you think about it, we are more than overcomers, I think as the scripture says in Christ Jesus, that we have been given the power of the Spirit so that we might live an emotionally and a spiritually healthy life. And so I want to encourage you to think about what that means for you and how that represents maybe a, a grounding and a faithfulness that um, the polar opposites don't necessarily well represent. Because I think in all things, if, it, if there's anything that we want to be as God's community in this world, we want to be authentic Christians. Not fake, not depressed Christians, not people who are trying to fake it till we make it kind of things, but rather knowing that we're going on a journey with God and that God is present no matter where we find ourselves. And that through this, God can lift us up, renew us, give us strength, and we'll praise God for all these things. Let's take a moment to pause and give thanks. So dear God, thank you for showing us the ways you want us to live in our thoughts, our words, and our deeds. May you create in this this balance that we seek, this authenticity that we desire, that folks will know that we are just as frail and human as anyone else, but yet, in that frailty, we know that your spirit can renew us and that you can give us strength. So walk with us today, no matter how we feel or what we're thinking, and remind us that you are our Savior, our Creator, our Sustainer. And we pray this in Christ. Amen. Thanks, friends, for being here today. Uh, I want to remind you, again, we'll be on tomorrow at our normal time. So come at 1145 for our time of devotion. I'll look forward to being with you then. And otherwise, I hope you enjoy the rest of this really pretty sunny Wednesday. A little cool and chilly outside here in Kansas City, but I, I hope you're enjoying this beautiful day. God's rich grace and peace be upon you, and I'll look forward to being with you tomorrow. Thank you, friends.